Abin Resources Limited is a gold exploration company with significant projects in British Columbia and the Yukon. Trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the OTCQB, symbol ABNAF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Mark Leibovit, editor and publisher of the Leibovit VR Newsletters, also known as VRTrader.com. He's speaking to us from Arizona. Welcome back to the show, Mark. Glad to be here, Jim. Thanks for having me. Mark, J.P. Morgan... Uh, predicted today that small caps and medium caps not only have done well against the senior markets, but they're saying they expect small and middle caps to do well, not just for a decade, but for decades to come. What's your point of view on that? I can't argue with that. That, that That's like saying, can a, can a market not go up uh, for the next hundred years or something like that? I mean, I, I you know, unless there's some outlier event where they... We have an asteroid hit the Earth or some crazy thing. You know, that's, that's, that's as logical a statement as any. I think that's different than saying, remember back, was it, uh, um, Goldman Sachs? Was it was a 2007 where they predicted gold, uh, crude oil was going to go to, uh, 200 and it topped out at 140 before it collapsed. I mean, I, that's a commodity play. Um, maybe, uh, it's not the greatest comparison, but, uh, I don't think you can compare stocks because, you know, stocks are based on how companies do and earnings and new technology that they might incorporate. So, uh, you know, maybe small companies could do well for decades or even centuries to come. So uh, I, I can't argue with that one. There's no way we're going to disprove that. <laughs> are the senior stocks pretty well uh, topped out? Like how much higher could an Amazon or an Apple go? I don't know it, how high is high. I mean, it's that's that's tough too. I mean, who, who would have predicted uh, GameStop, uh, for example? A little speculation that intrigued so many people, going from twenty dollars a share to to, to the mid four hundreds. I mean, you know, that that company has no uh, real earnings or you know, really no no great financial future that I could see. But uh, uh, how far can the shorts? take the stocks when people are short, I guess is the question. I mean, if people, if players were short Apple and they could squeeze Apple, they could double or triple the stock on a short squeeze, but that's not, apparently that's not happening. They're not interested in shorting something that uh, is a real company, but uh, to answer your question, uh, it's, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, you know, I really, uh, really don't know. I mean, we just you know, take it a day at a time here. Uh, you know, these, these big companies, Look awfully high to me. Uh, I think I, my overall feeling. I think you've seen or heard this in my letter or my previous commentary. I'm, I'm not looking for 2021 to be a great market year. I think a lot of it is out of the market. And if you do look at some of the um, uh, the Nasdaq 100 stocks, and we're, this is what we're talking about: the Apples, the Netflix, the Googles, you know, and so forth and so on. Even uh, Tesla, to a certain degree. Uh, uh, you know, the, the, the charts show they've topped out, you know, and how long is that top for? Is it, you know, just through the summer or is it last through this year into next year? But, you know, at some point they're going to come roaring back again. But shorter term to near term, I'd be cautious on the big names. In fact, as you know, the NASDAQ 100 has been underperforming and has been the weaker index of all the, uh, Indexes and going back to your question a moment ago about the small cap stocks, the Russell 2000 has been the stronger index, even though it looks like it may have topped out here short term because it got extended. So the smaller stocks were doing better, and the big name high tech uh, growth names uh, show that they peaked. So that's sort of what's been happening uh, the last few weeks. Are the sharp investors doing a rotation? I'll do big caps. For a little bit, then small caps, then mid caps, and then look at something else. Uh, they've been well. They've been looking for more defensive plays. This is what I hear. You know, uh, dividend stocks, things that you know generate some cash flow. The blue chip names. You know, like oh, I guess the name that comes to mind because it's been doing so well is like a Walt Disney. 
uh, you know, the stock is, you know, virtually at, a, at all time highs, you know, in the 90 to 100 dollar range. I remember back in, so far back I go, 1974, I think, when it was trading like $16 a share, and that was after, that was before many, many splits in the stock. So, um, you know, they're looking for like household names, um, you know, this is a name like, even a name like Philip Morris and Altria, which are tobacco companies. They've been acting better recently. You know, people still smoke. They're getting into marijuana. Uh, they pay a good dividend. Uh, so there's been sort of a movement toward a little more conservative type names since the big names are so extended. Now, whether that means the Dow Industrials and the S&P are going to hold up all year and uh, or not, that's tough to say because if the market comes down, the baby goes out with bathwater. But... Uh, uh, that seems to be the migration. Get out of this more speculative names, get into quote unquote more stable names. But even the stable names have made huge moves. Even the Dow Industrials, would it go from 18,900 to 33,000 from March to March, you know, in the last 12 months since the COVID crash? So you're not talking cheap stocks. I mean, you can rotate out of the, the Googles and the Netflixes and the Teslas and the Apples and, uh, you know, so forth, but uh, these other stocks have moved up as well. You're not buying them at bargain pay- basement prices, so uh, maybe there's a little less risk, but there's still risk. We'll have more with Mark Leibovit right after this. Engineer Gold Mines is focused on the exploration and development of the historic high-grade Engineer Gold Mine situated 32 kilometers southwest of Atlin, British Columbia. Engineer Gold Mines is fully permitted for surface and underground exploration with the drill program now underway. Engineer Gold Mines Limited trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol EAU. For more information, please visit us at engineergoldmines.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Mark Leibovit. Mark, John Kaiser from Discovery Watch, a regular guest with Howe Street. I just did an extensive interview with him for This Week in Money. And he thinks, uh, as we come out of COVID, that we might have uh, the Roaring Twenties uh, 2.0. Because just like the original 1920s, they came out of a war where millions were killed. The Spanish flu where millions died and people were locked down in their homes. Masks were mandatory, much like it is now. And then afterwards, the stock market took off. The economy's boom. People went out and had the greatest time of their lives. Are we back into what could become the new version of the Roaring Twenties? I'm just, I'm just thinking out loud whether we've already experienced it because you, you, you didn't have the small, uh, the small guy in there uh, as much as you're suggesting. Though many have been, you know, subsidized with government payments and uh, so forth, you know, and the new stimulus package and. That drove a lot of people into the uh, into the markets and drove prices up, particularly a lot of the speculative issues. Uh, you know, it's tough to argue with that. I mean, you know, obviously if he's if he's on track, I'm wrong in thinking the markets are extended and uh, need to, a little more of a uh, corrective phase. I think there's there's counter forces at work here. You've got markets that are already really high. You've got, I hate to use the word criminal, but, you know, criminal administration running the uh, U.S. government right now because of what happened with the election. Uh, you see that quote yesterday where Biden comes out and accuses Putin of being a, you know, a criminal or what does he call him? He called him a murderer. A murderer. I mean, you, you got people in the government that are so bad, they're going to make terrible mistakes, and that ter- terrible mistakes can lead to economic, you know, catastrophe too, raising taxes, interest rates are going up, just general mismanagement, uh, you know, there's other than letting, you know, people cross the border that shouldn't be crossing the border, who knows what they're, they're going to bring in, they, terrorists could be coming in across the border, maybe more disease than they even they figured on. You know, so to think that uh, it's party time and it's the 1920s and everything is great with what I see happening, you know, with prices already high and with the the, the idiots in charge, um, you know, I'm I'm a little less optimistic than that scenario, though I don't or disagree that, you know, people have money. Are they going to spend it on stocks? Are they going to spend it having a good time? Are they going to buy homes? Are they going to do other things with their money? Are they going to go in and buy these Reddit um Robin Hood type stocks, speculate. A lot of people are thinking that's going to happen. I don't know if people always think that way. Maybe the 18-year-olds, you know, do that have some extra cash. So, uh, 
gee, you know, let's let's see how it all plays out. Yeah, obviously, if they want to keep the Dow running, I mean, I had big picture targets. I mean, I, we talked about this over a 20-year period, the Dow going 40, 50, 60,000. I mean, it's 33,000. I'm definitely seeing that as a possibility, but I don't necessarily think, think, think it's going to happen this year. Well, back in the 1920s, you had shoeshine boys giving people investment advice. How is that any different than a Robin Hooder tweeting or using whatever social network he has and telling his friends, hey, I heard about this hot little stock called GameStop. Uh, you have to get in on it. Right. Same thing. And uh, yeah, I get all the Reddit you know, emails during the day at all the kids, and, and they're talking about this stock and that stock and uh, the you know the Robin Hood group, and you know that that that's not the whole stock market. That's a portion of it. That's speculation. That's great. I'm glad people are getting involved and squeezing some of the big boys. But uh, that's you know that's not the uh, the whole market by any stretch. So I I, I don't know. I'm I'm going to take it a day at a time here. There's, you know we we tend to trade more than anything else. I, I'm not the guy to go to to say, hey Mark, uh, you know, give me one stock that I could hold for the next you know five or ten years and. Uh, you know, maybe you know it's, it's tough. You know, I I could like one for a year or two, and you know, maybe a Disney or some name like that that doesn't seem like it's going to go away might be a name I would throw out there. But I'm more of a more of a trader. We try to catch you know some of the swings, and that it's it's a long story, but it goes back to my philosophy that I was taught when I was on the floor of the Chicago Board Options Exchange decades ago that the guys that were really successful as traders. You know, looked at this business as, a, and I think even the big guys that you don't hear is this is this is really true. They're looking to ring the register every day, make money, think of it as a job, put the cash in your pocket, and go on to the next day, and not sitting there saying, "Gee, I'm a long-term investor. I'm just going to put my money in here, and I'm going to do great over the next 20 years." No, they're looking to make money every day, and this is what the professionals do. And the short, long, whatever is involved in, in getting to that uh, objective. So, uh, you know, I, my, my, my philosophy is more, you know, we can pick something, make something on it, uh, over a day or two or even a couple months. Uh, I'll give you an example. I mean, we jumped in some of the cannabis stocks, um, just a couple, you know, they, you know, they had run up big, as you know, or a couple months, about a month or so back because of the legalization story and the fact that the, uh, Democrats are in controlling government here in the U.S. and so forth. So they run up, they pull back, and then on the big pullback, we jumped in because that's how I like to buy this stuff. You know, when everybody else is throwing the baby out with the bathwater and they're killing them and they're dropping them down big, you know, I give you a lot of stocks that we trade that way that recently we did well with. But then it ran up, and then we sold them. In fact, I sold all my cannabis stocks, went to cash yesterday, don't own one of them. And we made anywhere from 10 to 30% returns in a matter of, you know, I don't think it was more than a week, you know, in some of those trades. And and I'm not saying I'm not going back into cannabis. Maybe I'll go back into it next week. I'm going to look at the charts. If I'm wrong and they break out and I have to chase them, I might do that as a trader. But I have a feeling I might be able to buy them back cheaper. So um, that's sort of the way I look at stuff. You know, how do we make money and, uh, you know, you not worry about the uh, the big picture and, you know, whether it's going to be uh, great five or ten years from now. And uh, people who want a different service... Or want to do that, I would just say buy the Dow or the S&P or the TSX indexes, uh, particularly if you're younger. Put the money away, dollar cost average. You know, every month put a fixed amount in because over time with inflation and manipulation and growth, uh, world growth, which is going to happen no matter if the communists are in charge or the Democrats or the, or the conservatives because everybody wants to make money, uh, the prices will go up and you'll make money eventually. We'll have more with Mark Leibovit right after this. Media recognition from Bloomberg, Reuters, Recycling Trade Publications, patented process for 100% recovery of critical metals, including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, aluminum. American Manganese is focused on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. American Manganese trades on the TSX Venture, AMY, the US, AMYZF, and Frankfurt 2AM. For more information, visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Mark Leibovit. Mark, at their Wednesday meeting, 
The U.S. Fed said they will do everything they can to keep interest rates low until at least 2023. But as our good friend Bob Hoy, market historian, has pointed out, since the Fed was invented in the early 1900s with the design of present of preventing recessions and depressions, we've had at least 18 recessions. How can their plans this time work out? They won't, because uh, <laughs> the Fed should have been dissolved uh, years ago, won't be. Uh, when originally set up, the banks owned shares. The uh, private banks owned the actors of private corporation and the uh, individual banks own the, the Federal Reserve and I believe that's probably still the case though it's not discussed. It is discussed uh, in very great detail in a very famous book, The Creature from Jekyll Island, which is about a 600 page documentation of the creation and the failure of the Federal Reserve. So uh, they won't succeed. They're always behind the curve. I remember joking in my newsletter a few years ago when Alan Greenspan was in charge of the the Fed and how I compared them to a New York City taxi cab driver because he would slam on the brakes and then slam on the accelerator and then slam on the brakes and slam on the accelerator. You don't know what the hell he was doing. My rates up and down all over the place trying to adjust for short-term perceptions of where things were going. And uh, the, the, the Fed, the, these people don't know anything about the, you know, predicting the future of the economy or the market. They react afterwards, usually badly. And uh, right now we're seeing rates go up. Um, and we may have hit generational lows in rates, and the world may demand higher rates, and the Fed will eventually have to get caught up with that. The stock market doesn't like that too much because people are going to have to start repricing you know, the uh, the risk of being in the stock market if, if rates start inching up and you can get returns elsewhere that are supposedly, quote-unquote, safer. So um, uh, don't hold your breath with the Fed, and uh, you know what he says one day may be another. And, you know, they do another thing called jawboning. You know, they may not actually move rates, but they'll threaten to do it, or they'll threaten, like they're now they're saying in a positive way, where well, we're going to keep it down, it won't go up. So they jawbone everybody thinking that it's going to stay low when really it will go up, but that they, they can sort of control the markets a little bit when they do that. And then we have to also remember that the Fed and the Treasury have access to the, uh, either directly or indirectly to what Ronald Reagan created back in 1988, the uh, plunge protection team. They actually called it the Working Group of Financial Markets. It's actually an entity out there that, that can go in there and buy and sell stock indexes and individual stocks now i'm sure i know uh japanese government has been buying and controls what about 80 percent of the float of the uh stock market over there so they can go in there and control the markets to a great degree they you know they just run the printing presses and buy all the dow jones industrial stocks or indexes or futures that they need to do at any critical moments in time so people have to be aware of that government involvement there you know that may be offset stupidity on the part of the fed so, you know, it's it's so dynamic, and, you know, ultimately, I don't worry about all this stuff. I just look at the charts, Jim. I mean, when I looked at the, like, we talked weeks and weeks ago, I told you interest rates were going to uptick, and uh, it wasn't that I'm so smart. I'm just looking at my uh, treasury bond chart, and it's bottoming out, and some volume is coming into the upside, and somebody smart out there saw that interest rates were not going to stay low, and uh, I don't know who, who the hell it was or who what the hell they're doing, but, you know, you, you see it in the chart pattern. So uh, as the old expression goes, the charts are the tracks in the sand. You try to follow the tracks and see so you can follow some of the smart money and, uh, you, know, make, you know, make some money and protect yourself. So long-winded response, but that's where I'm at. Mark, before we go, do you still have a special offer for our listeners? We do. It is uh, 2021. I don't know which one should I give the quarter or half off offer. How, do you think our listeners deserve both, one or both? Tell me. <laughs> oh, I'm generous. Give them everything. Give them everything. All right. So we we have our special promotions. We've been we reducing it to quarter to quarter off, and that's because we just uh, thought we did such a great job that half was too too generous. But um, just for this broadcast, because you're such a nice guy. And we may go back next week. So all of you listening out there, it's 50% off just this week here at House Street. And it's 2021 half off is your promo code when you go to vrtrader.com for any of the products or any of the subscription uh, time frames. 2021 half off at vrtrader.com in the promo code slot. And 
Again, thanks for having me, Jim. Mark, thank you for being so generous. My pleasure. And for all the HowStreet.com listeners, we have a special treat. Friday, March 19th, I'll be hosting a webinar with Rick Ackerman, editor of the newsletter Rick's Picks. And Rick has a, a particular point of view that a lot of people don't think is going to happen. So many economists are predicting that we're going to be facing hyperinflation. Rick, you have a different point of view. Why do you think deflation is going to be the big problem we face in the future? Uh, well, first, thanks for... Uh of helping me to put this together, Jim, uh, I do think that the end game will feature deflation. We've got such a, an, an acute mania going on in all investables right now that even the bulls must be forced to see that, that it's not going to end well. So as far as I'm concerned, the bad ending is going to be deflation rather than inflation. And although that sounds counterintuitive because of all the credit stimulus that's going on, uh, I think in the end it's debtors that are going to get stuck, not lenders. And that implies in deflation, it implies a strong dollar, uh, a crushing burden of real debt. It implies that we're never really going to get out of our mortgages by being able to pay our lenders in a $100,000 bill snide. So uh, that's way, that's where I think things are going, and, and I'm in a very small minority with that uh, scenario. And Rick, what's the website they should go to? Yeah, it's, that's rickackerman.com. If you go to rickspicks.com, yeah. you're going to find a New York-based pickle and relish vendor. <laughs> so uh, rickackerman.com is where you want to go. You can sign up for two free weeks of everything I offer, including a couple of great, great trading rooms uh, for just $1. So that's just click start trial at the top of the page, rickackerman.com. So join us Friday, March 19th for a webinar with Rick Ackerman about deflation. It starts at 10 o'clock Pacific, 1 o'clock Eastern Time. My guest has been Mark Leibovit, editor and publisher of the Leibovit VR newsletters, also known as vrtrader.com. He was speaking to us from Arizona. If you have any questions for Mark or any of our other guests, you can send them to info at HowStreet.com. Our YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. Find us on Twitter at HowStreet. We're also on Facebook. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. HowStreet.com Radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.